Many of our celebrations involve food and drink. We drink champagne over New Year's, eggnog at Christmas, salmiyaki all the time, though that might just be in Finland. Now, some of those traditions are born from modern marketing. I'm sure the French champagne makers don't complain about our New Year's traditions after all. But some traditional food ceremony comes from the misty past and is steeped in history and culture. And that's what I want to talk about today. Food and drink, the ceremonial role thereof in fantasy cultures, and how to incorporate that into your own cultures that you create. Welcome to another episode of Just in Time Worlds with your host, Marie Mullaney. Today, I want to talk to you about ceremonies involving food and drink and how to use them in a fantasy world. I'll cover socializing, religious and spiritual aspects, as well as magical aspects of ceremonies with food and drink. As always, I will cover our historical context, as well as looking into how this has been used in fantastical worlds. If you like this kind of world building content, please do consider smashing that subscribe button. If you want to support me in making more of these videos, you can buy my book or hit my Ko-fi page and more about that at the end of the video. I also do have a Discord server where you can connect with me and other world builders. Okay, let's get cracking with ceremonies, cultures and food. The first type of food ceremony I want to talk to you about is formal social settings. Now, certainly having a dinner with friends or say a banquet with a king is part of the subset of ceremonies, but I thought it would be more interesting to discuss Buna, the Ethiopian coffee ceremony. This ceremony starts with green coffee beans. The hostess will roast the coffee beans on an open pan over the fire, and as it is roasting, she will present it to the various guests so that they can enjoy the rich smell of roasting coffee. Then she will take the roasted coffee beans and grind them using a traditional mortal and pestle rather than a modern grinding machine into a fine coffee powder. This coffee is then added to a clay pot to brew the coffee in called the jabena. And while this is done, frankincense is burnt adding to the sensory experience of the ceremony. The coffee is then served either with sugar or with salt and with snacks like popcorn on the side. The knowledge of this ceremony is passed from mother to daughter in Ethiopia and it brings people together in a social situation where they may discuss the day and enjoy the rich taste of their traditional drink coffee. A fantasy application of this kind of ceremony that I've always enjoyed comes from David Eddings. In the Illinium Tamuli series, there is a tribe of nomadic horsemen called the Peloi, and when they meet with friends, they take salt together and speak of affairs. This consists of eating well-roasted lamb with salt taken from a leather bag. After salting the lamb, you shake your fingers in the direction of the four winds, And only after that will any serious discussion take place. And those are two examples which for me speak to our need for entering ceremony into social occasions, acknowledging each other by consuming food and drink before we enter into serious discussions or while we are discussing things, sharing that food and drink, which is, of course, life-giving as well. Socializing is not the only reason to have a ceremony based around food, however. There is also a spiritual and religious aspect to having these kinds of ceremonies. The best example from our world that I have of the spiritual aspect is that of the Japanese tea ceremony which is a ceremony that is about engendering calm in the participants and about meditating on the message that the host is conveying with their choice of pottery, flower, and wall hanging. So let's take a look at the Japanese tea ceremony and how it is done. First, the guests gather and they wait for the host in the garden where the tea ceremony is going to take place. Here they are supposed to let go of their worldly concerns and 
enjoy the sound and the smell and taste of nature. From the garden, they will purify their hands and mouth and then go into the room where the tea ceremony is to take place. Here they will see the hanging scroll or wall scroll that the host has chosen, which is part of the story that the host is telling. They will also see the pottery that the host has chosen to serve the tea in. The host will serve the meal that accompanies the tea ceremony and the sweet of the tea ceremony at this point. They will also use the charcoal to heat up the room and to start the process of cooking the tea. In addition to this, they will burn incense calling us back to the smells of the Buna ceremony. So you can see that engaging all the senses is a very important part of these ceremonies, whether it is for social or spiritual aspect. After the meal is complete, the guests will leave the room again and the host will bring in a flower. When the guests return into the room where the tea ceremony is being held, they will then admire the flower and meditate upon the story that the host has told with the pottery, the wall hanging and the flower. It is at this point that tea is served for the first time during the ceremony. The purpose, as I said, of the tea ceremony is to create a space of calm and meditation for the guests. There are ceremonies that focus more on religious aspects with food and drink. The most famous example of this is the Christian communion. Now, there is a schism in Christianity where Roman Catholics believe that the bread and wine is transmuted into the flesh and blood of Christ, and Protestants believe that uh, it is merely a memory of the blood and body of Christ. And this leads to certain differences in the words that are spoken when the communion is consumed. But without going into the incredibly complex liturgy of Christianity, what I want to emphasize here is that there are words that are spoken when you consume the communion. And what it is supposed to do is to evoke in the person participating in the communion the memory of the sacrifice that Christ has made according to the Christian mythos. So we have addressed the social and religious aspects of consuming food and drink as part of a ceremony. But what about the magical? Let's turn our attention to some fantastical and magical examples. Sin Eaters from Welsh mythology is one of the most amazing examples of magical and spiritual food consumption. A sin eater is a person who consumes a ritual meal in order to spiritually take on the sins of a deceased person. The food was believed to absorb the sins of a recently dead person, thus absolving the soul of the person. Sin eaters carried the sins of all the people whose sins they had eaten. This is an amazing piece of myth. Sadly, every single example from fantasy, including Final Fantasy XIV, focuses on the magical aspect of this without considering the glory of consuming actual food and taking on the sins of another person and how that would affect the sin eater. Honestly, it is such an amazing concept and I hope someone gives it some airtime at some point in the future. An interesting note on magical food is that it is often considered to be an entrapment. In the Dresden Files, there is a great deal of reference to not eating fairy food because it will ensure that you're trapped in the never-never. This mythos probably originally comes from the legend of Hades and Persephone. Hades stole Persephone away to the underworld and her mother Demeter searched for her. If Persephone had not eaten in the underworld, she would have been able to return to the world above. But Hades fed her pomegranate seeds, and so she has to spend half the year in the underworld with him. For a fantasy example of this magical food type, Narnia is an amazing example. Edmund Pevensey consumes hot chocolate and Turkish delight created by the witch for him, and his desire for more of this food turns him against his siblings and into a traitor to his own people. It is such a great sin that Aslan has to die in his place 
to cleanse him of it. So your magical or fantastical aspects of consuming food in a ceremonial fashion is quite an interesting addition to the social and spiritual type. So what does all this mean for you when you're building a culture? It seems to be a running theme in our cultures in this world that we have this ritual consumption of food and drink. So it would certainly make sense for you to have it in your world. When you're building one of these ceremonies, ask yourself, what is the purpose of the ceremony? Is it to socialize? Is it spiritual or religious in nature? Or is it part of some kind of magical or fantastical ceremony? Then choose your main ingredient. This should be something that is available to the people who are participating in this region. For example, Ethiopia is the birthplace of coffee, hence the coffee ritual, the Buna ritual from Ethiopia. Decide how much time the ritual should consume and based on that add the elements that take place during the ritual. Split those elements down into preparation, serving and goodbyes. Don't forget to add in some purely ceremonial actions that might not make sense to later generations but are now part of the ritual and hence must forever be done this way. And as always, do not be afraid to draw from real-world history. Drawing from real-world history makes your rituals feel very real. You cannot make up the stuff we have done over the millennia as people. However, always respect the culture you are drawing from. If you make a mockery of the culture that you are drawing from in order to build your ritual, you will be called on it. And that is my take on ceremonial food and drink and rituals and building them into a fantasy culture. I hope that you enjoyed that episode of Just In Time Worlds. Please do hit the thumbs up button if you did. It helps make sure that the algorithm doesn't bury the content out back. Also feel free to share this video far and wide. If you really enjoyed this and you want to help me make more of these videos, you can buy my book, The Hidden Blade by Marie M. Mullaney, or you can hit my Ko-fi page where you can make a one-off donation, buy a membership, or even buy a product. And I will see you soon for another episode of Just In Time Worlds.